Hello, welcome to this uh, lecture video. I'm Teacher Melai and let's talk about problem solving. So you are already provided with this outline and we are already done with inductive, deductive, intuition, proof, certainty, the police problem solving, problem solving strategies. And this lecture will discuss something about mathematical problems involving patterns and recreational problems using mathematics. So let us start with the mathematical problems involving patterns. So in this slide, so you are, I think, uh, familiar with this because when we try to search for patterns in our discussion, especially when we discuss the Fibonacci sequence, is that other patterns we discuss is we have the linear, quadratic, and all other patterns. And we mentioned in that discussion that for us to determine what type of pattern is that, or in exploring, you are given, you are um, asked to find for the differences, or you can um, observe looking at the values by trying to figure out what operations are involved in the next number and and the next number or in the consecutive numbers so in this example so as you can see the first difference is not common but the second difference is common which means that this is a quadratic equation now let us also um, talk about other problems with patterns like poly polygo uh, polygonal numbers so the ancient Greek mathematics were actually interested in geometric shapes associated with numbers. So, for instance, we have here the triangular numbers 1, 3, 6, 10, and 15. So, by counting for the number of that that are involved here to form or to make the size of a triangle bigger, so... Um, 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, and other numbers are called. The, the next number after this is called triangular number. And then for the square numbers, so we have 1, 4, 9, 16, and 25. Pentagonal number, 1, 5, 12, 22, and 35. So you are already familiar with these uh, numbers, which is, as mentioned, being discussed when we discuss patterns also in the first uh, chapter. So for other information about these polygo polygonal numbers, let us also consider historical note about one of the famous uh, Greek mathematicians in the person of Pythagoras. So Pythagoras is... Um, ancient Greek philosopher and mathematicians who formed a secret brotherhood, he called it as Pythagorean. So they believe that the nature of the universe was directly related to mathematics and the whole numbers and the ratio formed by whole numbers could be used to describe and represent all natural events. So to um, uh, give symbol to their group, they use a pentagon wherein um, a star is inscribed inside this pentagon. Okay, while uh, for the second topic, the second topic that we're going to talk about is recreational problems. So this is an example of recreational problems. It could be that we might think that it's, uh, it's like a puzzle, yes, because... Uh, Recreational, recreational problems are actually puzzles. So let us consider this problem. So each of four neighbors, Sean, Marie, Sarah, and Brian, has a different occupation. So editor, banker, chef, or a dentist. So this is not arranged. From the following clues, determine the occupation of the following neighbors. So to answer this problem, of course, we have to consider our board. So let us open our board. And let's use paint and answer this again side by side. 
Okay, let us consider this. Okay, so each of the four neighbors, Sean Marie, Sean Marie and Sarah. So let us uh, place the name here. So the um, editor, banker, or maybe we can just use a symbol. So E corresponds to editor, B corresponds to bankers, C is chef, and D is uh, dentist. While for the name, so we have uh, Sean. So I'll use SN because we have two S, uh, Sean and Sarah. Maria is M, Sarah is SH, and Brian is B. So what? we need to do is to find for the occupation of Sean, Maria, Sarah, and Brian. So let us read. Maria gets home from work after the bunker but before the dentist, which means Maria is not a bunker and she is also not a dentist so maybe we can write x1 x1 to correspond that this is a cross out based from clue number one number two sarah who is the last to get home from work is not the editor so sarah is not editor x2 and then, um, let us also consider that because it is stated in X1 that Maria gets home from work after the bunker but before the dentist. So, since it's, it is mentioned here that the last to get home from work is Sarah. So, can we also consider that she is not a bunker okay let's go back later to that so let's consider number three the dentist and sarah live for work at the same time so sarah is not the dentist because they live at the same time so maybe we can go back to number one it states here that maria gets home from work after the bunker but before the dentist the bunker number four the bunker leaves next door to brian so of course it means that bunker is not brian Okay, so how will we consider now who is who? So, um, since uh, Sarah is the last to get home, so it means that he's not the bunker. Because he goes home with, he goes home with, the dentist and the bunker it states in number one that after the bunker but before the dentist so he cannot be the bunker which means so we are left with one answer here so sarah is a chef so since maria cannot be a chef anymore it means that let's cross out that she is editor so let us uh, consider that since maria is already editor let us cross out that brian is editor and sean is editor that also um sarah is already the chef so sean cannot be the chef and brian cannot be the chef so for Brian, since Brian cannot be the bunker because he lives next door to Brian, then it means that Brian is a 
dentist. So, Shan cannot be dentist anymore. So, we are going to cross out that because the dentist is Brian. So, Shan is the banker. So, based uh, from here, so we were able to determine that Shan is the banker, Maria is the editor, Sarah is the chef, and Brian is the dentist. So this is an example of recreational problem. And then next, let us also consider the work of uh, Martin Gardner. So uh, Martin Gardner is the author of Scientific American's column entitled Mathematical Gains from 1956 to 1981 recounts 25 years of amusing puzzles and serious discovery. Okay, so this is one of uh, the problems or the recreational or puzzles given by Gardner. So here the, uh, the task is uh, to select a number and then to, for instance, to encircle a number here and then cross out the numbers that is aligned, for instance, in the row. So we have to cross out 34, 32, 36, aligned in the row and aligned in the column. And then you have to repeat the procedure until you are left with the encircled numbers. So what we're going to do here is to select this. So that we can work and do it in the micros uh, in in paint. So let us consider one, two, or let's just consider two examples. So what will we do? So we are going to encircle numbers. So let me choose red. So here, so let us uh, just retain the selected and circled number and crossed out or slushed other numbers. So if I will choose 18 here, which means align in its column, I'll cross out or slash 30, 36, 6, 12, and 24. And then align to 18 in a row. So I have to cross out all of this. And then I'll select another number, for example, 4. I'll cross out 2, 3, 1. In its row, I have to cross out 10, 12, 28, 30, 4. So if I'll select one number here, it means that I have to cross out 20, 26, so 32. So I don't need to cross out all other numbers because it's already crossed out. And 8, I'll cross out 9, 11, 7. I'll choose number 21, cross out 19, 23. So in the column, I need to cross out number 27. So do we have other more numbers to cross out? So we're done with this row. Next, next 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 and 25 so cross out all the numbers in the row and column so we are left with one two three four five six numbers while here if i'll change the encircled number or if i i'll choose another number like 16 so cross out all other numbers again cross out and then I'll choose 12, cross out, cross out, and choose 2, cross out other numbers, and 21, cross out, cross out, and again, 25, cross out, cross out. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we are left with 4 plus 18 plus 8 plus 21 plus 
25. On this side, 25 plus 35 plus 16 plus 2 plus 12 plus 21. So if we're going to calculate the values, so let us use the calculator. 4 plus 18 plus 8 plus 21 plus 25. 4 plus 18 plus 8 plus 21 plus 25 is 76. 1, 2, 3, 4. And of course, we miss 35. Let's go back. Plus 35 is 1, 1, 1. Now, let us also compute the numbers on the side. 25 plus 35 plus 16 plus 2 plus 12 plus 21, you will get also a number equal to 111. So if you're going to keep on repeating the same procedure you were asked to do, to circle and to cross out align numbers in rows and in columns, you will always get 111. What do you think is the reason why? So according to Garner, so he actually considers that, or in his explanation, he said that, so let's have the numbers 3, 1, 5, 2, 4, 0, 25, 31, 13, 1, 7, 19. So we use these numbers as a generator. So if you can see, for example, um, let's say 35. Let's consider this. This is equal to 31 plus 4 is equal to 35. And if I'll choose another number like 34, 34 is 31 plus 3. So he used this for him to make sure that... Whatever number that you're going to select, since it is the generators of uh, this number, this is supposed to be 13. It's not 31. The result is always the pair fr coming from this uh, generator. So this is 19, so it's 19 plus 0. So that's the reason why if you have to select or to insert a number and cross out everything in its row and its column, it will always give you the same number and that is 111 okay so let us go back to our slide so this is another example given by Gardner so in the, this problem so as you can see here we have three cards king ace and queen so mr. Jones a card sharp put three cards face down on a table one of the card is an ace the other Two are face cards. That's a king and a queen. You place a finger on one of the cards, betting that this card is the ace. So you are asked to select, and you have to place your to point the, your card, and that is the ace. So the probability that you pick the ace is clearly it's one third because it's three cards. Jones now secretly picks at each card because there is only one ace among the three cards. At least one of the cards could you didn't choose must be a face card. So Jones turns over this card and show it to you. What is the probability now on face? No, now that he opened the card, he, he opened it. Does it mean that the probability that this is ace is already another number or it is still one-third? So you might, of course, answer that the probability is one-half because you, or you, just ha you are left with two cards. But the correct answer is one-third. So it is still, even if he opens the card, the fact that you chose a number or you chose rather a card out of the three it will not 
change the fact that the probability is still one third. So the answer for this is one third. So there are more puzzle problems that you might be familiar or it would um, sometimes, of course, it would be your first time to encounter it. But one thing is definite here. So those problems make use of uh, um, logics. It makes use of like cards, numbers, puzzles are all recreational problems. And it is mathematics. Okay, so thank you for watching.